the Order or the Cult of the Ancestor Moth are a group of people that essentially live in Cyrodiil and are dedicated to reading the Elder Scrolls. And now essentially the Order believes that the Ancestor Moths are manifested by the spirits of their ancestors and as such they take care of them. The cult believes that every moth carries a Phyron, or Phyron, I know that's a really hard word, but there's a Y and a J in there, of a spirit which is loosely translated to the Will of the Peace. This is then sung into the silk produced by the Ancestor Moths, which can be spun into clothing. Given the genealogy of the Ancestor is correct, the when the silk is spun into cloth and then embroidered, powerful clothing can be made. It is said that when a person has died on Nern, the monks believe a kind of dissipation, uh, dissipation begins and the Ancestor Moths learn the song of the souls. Thing, whatever, we're gonna go with thing at the moment, which in turn are shepherded by the monks and protected for generations. The reason why this thing is sung into the silk is because it can, it must retain a connection up to the fabric of creation. Through this link alongside patient care, guidance from above, the present, past, and the known world is received where time is irrelevant. As such, the moths neither capture nor devour the souls of the ancestors, instead repeating what is filtered from the dead. The Order has a sacred duty to the Elder Scrolls, and the knowledge of which they use to aid the Emperor. On occasions, priests are sent out to collect more scrolls for their library in the White Gold Tower, where the moth priests occupy the middle floors. Adepts to the Order are gifted with present powers, and essentially, as the wisdom of the ancestors can show the future well in the present, as a result of this, the Order of the Ancestor Moth is given the sole privilege to interpret these scrolls, artifacts which exceed both the Aedra and and Daedra. Reading of the Elder Scrolls comes at a price though. Every time you read an Elder Scroll, it's more profound than the last, and every reading leaves the, the priest essentially blind for longer periods of time than before. The last Elder Scroll a Moth Priest reads is the scroll which leaves him permanently blinded. During the last reading, the priest achieves a nearly sublime understanding of the contents of that scroll, and after being blinded, the Moth Priest loses the ability to read a new scroll. Those who have been blinded are brought to the Temple of the Ancestor Moth, Ancestor Moths, which is located in the Jural Mountains of Cyrodiil. The monastery is dedicated to serving these members of the Order, which are considered noble at this point. At the monastery, the blinded priests live out the remainder of their lives and take care of the Ancestor Moths, which they so love. Underneath the monastery are where the priests are found, and as these conditions are well suited to the Moths, they essentially nurture and take care of them still singing to them constantly they still harvest the silk and spin spin it spin it into bolts of cloth as well and this cloth is then used to be woven and embroidered with the genealogies and histories of each moth and the moth that produces the silk so as the blind monks tend to the ancestors mo ancestor moth so do the monks of the monastery tend to the blind monks providing them with food water tools the necessary things to survive, and the novitiates of the cult also provide protection. Once upon a time, a monk named Gudrun came to the monastery, being blinded of visions of what was to come, and she brought new teachings. Her visions had provided her with the foresight that the monks needed to defend themselves, and as such, the priests began to train and practice her teachings constantly, which would be known as the Peaceful Fist, because obviously fists are always peaceful. Yes, they are. Don't give me that look. Don't look at the camera weird. The monks keep the Elder Scrolls in the Imperial Library, which is within the Imperial Palace. Here, the scrolls were sorted based on a variety of categories, such as scrolls related to specific prophecies or scrolls related to particular periods of history. Attempting to categorize the scrolls, however, fails, as whenever they are attempted to be categorized, areas would overlap or contradict one another, and different monks are even said to have claimed the same scroll to be located in a different location or a different section of the tower. When one attempts to count the Elder Scrolls, they are often tricked as well, as the scrolls do not exist in countable form. Whenever a specific number of scrolls are counted, this number changes when they are counted again, though a contradicting account by Moth Priestess Teran Arminius states that the notion of the Elder Scrolls moving on their own is false, having personally served a scroll drudge. There are four specific groups that can be affected by the Elder Scrolls, each belonging to different individuals. The first group are known as the Naifs, and they cannot learn a prophecy or read the scrolls at all, and essentially uh, are, are 
can't do a thing with there. And then the second group are unguarded intellects, and they do learn from the Elder Scrolls. However, it's very minimal, and whatever knowledge they possess is at a absolute extreme cost. They haven't essentially developed the adequate discipline or skills to prevent the mind-shattering effect of reading the scroll, and when these people read the scroll, they are permanently blinded, and they just get a fragment of what is achieved, a fragment of knowledge that, that that is there. The final two groups are the meditated understanding and the illuminated understanding, both of which have only achieved, but have only been achieved by the cult of the ancestor moth. As only the cult has been found, the discipline. They are the only ones that have found the discipline and the practice required to protect one's mind from reading the scrolls. Uh, novitiates of the cult must undergo rigorous mental cultivation, often spending a decade or more in their monastery before even being permitted to read their first Elder Scrolls. During this time, it is un not uncommon for initiates to suffer from nightmares, even more so as they learn more about the Elder Scrolls and the ancestors that grant them the wisdom to approach their infinite mysteries. The monks claim this time of cultivation is for the initiate's own protection as they have witnessed a number of unguarded intellects among their eager ranks. With the proper training, these cultivated initiates still achieve blindness though as a, at a far lesser magnitude compared to the unguarded ones. Their vision is fogged slightly, but they still retain shape, color, and enough acuity to continue reading normal texts. The information provided by the scroll is somewhat tempered, and the initiates require both meditation and reflection to fully understand what they saw. Monks have often get attempted to translate the runes they find on the Elder Scroll after the reading, only to, conc only to conclude what they wrote down is gibberish, as the messages of the scroll have been written on one's spirit and soul. Now, the monks of the Ancestor Moth achieve illuminated understanding through the continued readings of the Elder, Scroll, Elder Scrolls. These monks become gradually more and more blind as time goes on, as we stated earlier, as the more you read an Elder Scroll, but achieve greater and more detailed understanding of what each reading is meant to represent. So they spend their days thinking about their vision, and they receive a stronger mental fortitude. As a result, the priest slowly loses their vision, the text in the Elder Scroll gradually takes on the characters of the language which is most familiar to the reader, making them more legible. Every monk also has a day of penultimate reading, which essentially is the day that the monks read their last excerpt from the Elder Scrolls. And when this reading is is unknown, as each monk encounters theirs at a different time, and even though there have been attempts to discover where this comes from or how how they can figure this out, there's not enough evidence supporting any significant reasons. Before the ultimate reading, the monks often withdraw to seclusion to reflect upon a lifetime of revelations and dedicate their minds to revealing the last bits of the Elder Scrolls. Following this ultimate reading, the monk is permanently blinded, and the newly blinded monks retain their knowledge over a lifetime, and is often able to describe what has been revealed to him in great detail. The monks also acknowledge that every prophecy recorded within the Elder Scrolls may or may not come to pass. No prophecies found within the scrolls are struck in the scroll until they have essentially come to pass. The ritual of the Ancestor Cult is a system performed within the Ancestor Glades of found across Tamriel, and we see these actually in the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim where there is one located there. There we see that at these glades are canticle trees, and essentially the bark of these trees must be carefully removed using a draw knife, a, a ritual every moth priest is taught, but few get the chance to perform. Through this ritual, one can attract ancestor moths to themselves, and these ancestor moths have a connection with ancient magic, which allow the moth priests to decipher the scrolls. The higher ranking monks of the cult have been able to forego the ritual necessary to enchant the ancestor's silk, and prefer to instead wear the moths around their neck, around the neck and face. Through finely grounded the bar, through finely grounded bark of the canticle tree, these monks were able to apply the bark dust for to their bodies. By doing so, the subvocalization of certain mantras ancestor moths would be able to be attracted to the monks. The mantras had to be repeated constantly in order to maintain the silk, maintain the skin contact within the moths, as effort to the monks had to endure for the sake of the cosmic balance. When a monk interrupts these mantras, such as a conversation or the anything that might go on, the moss will burst from his body in a remarkable fashion every time he speaks, only to return to his skin once he resumes. And essentially within the Imperial City, moth priests could often be seen walking around surrounded by a cloud of ancestor moths. 
Now, with the history, they date back quite far, and during the time of the Syro Nordics, the people of Cyrodiil had exported ancestor silk silks to the rest of Tamriel, which are silks woven from the native gypsy moth known as the Ancestor Moth. When the cult of the Ancestor Moth came into existence, Ancestor and Moth became one and the same. In a, spe in a special ritualistic gathering of Ancestor Silk, the singing and the hymnal spirits of the person's forebears were caught. The resource is then used to create a variety of costumes and robes. The swishing of the Ancestor Silk during the movement produced uh, an ancestral chorus which was contained within the material during the gathering. This quickly became a sacred custom among the early Nibbanese, a custom which continued to exist for many years to come. The Colovians considered the cult of the Ancestor Moth bizarre, and much like the, much like the other Nibbanese cults that existed at this time as well. During the Alliance War of the Second Era, each of the alliances had sent out generals and legates demanding custody of the Elder Scrolls. The Moth Priests, of course, refused, stating that they needed to be protected and they shouldn't be used to benefit anyone and this use is forbidden. Following this, the Cult of the Ancestor Moth was then raided and some of the Elder Scrolls were taken by the Daggerfall Covenant, Ebonheart Pact, and the First Aldmeri Dominion. One of the monks of the cult studied at the war after the scrolls were stolen and did notice a pattern between the victories of each of the alliances and the scrolls that were in their possession. This monk, Brother Eucalyptus, theorized that the soldiers in the army which possessed an Elder Scroll are open on an unconscious level to a collective absorption of the prophecies in the scrolls. Because of this, the monk argues that as far as the goal of the soldiers all align toward a victory over their enemies, they also collectively make choices which align with the prophecies set in the scroll. An army with a scroll is therefore somewhat more likely to make a decision that coincides with the probability of events, leading to victories. Though these tests were based on rather small scale, leaving room for doubt. Elaborate temples were created to house the Elder Scrolls, and these temples were known as the House of... I, I did check too to make sure. The Elder Scroll of Kim, Gartuk, Almaruma, Manem, Nimuk, and Alara Dun. And now I wasn't sure if it was Kaim or Kim or Chime. I'm going to go with... A, Probably Chim. I, I try to speak with it. It's never really stated whether or not it's Chim or Kaim, so I'm going to leave that up to you guys as well. And now, one priest noted that, ironically, one of the scrolls that might show how the war would come to an end, but that was one of the scrolls that was sto stolen, no, and no such reading could be done by uh, any of the ancestor moths at this time. The priest also pointed out that. The power of the scrolls had blinded the alliances to the knowledge that they currently held. Forces from all three alliances essentially raided the temple and cut down any priests who attempted to defend the scrolls and took them back to the alliance. Each alliance, I should say. Each alliance had managed to capture two scrolls apiece, and the cult tried to retrieve the scrolls by sending out emissaries, but these were denied, uh, denied by them. Each of the protectors of the alliance had their own opinion on returning the scroll. The covenant acknowledged that the scrolls were needed for war, and that handing them over would only result in the pact or dominion of acquiring them. The pact responded with disdain, believing that the priests could not expect them to hand over the Elder Scrolls they worked so hard to obtain, ordering their guards to deny any emissaries henceforth and waiting for any that continued to show up to be beaten or tortured at this point. Only the, the only protector of the Aldmeri Dominion was uneasy with denying the Emissary of the Scrolls, but acknowledged that the Dominion soldiers needed the boons that the Scrolls provided. The protector revered the Scrolls and honored the Moth Priests for their dedication and study, but still made the Temple Guard to escort them out of the way. The last Moth Priest within the Imperial City was Sister Tehran Arminius, and also left an Elder Scroll within the White Gold Tower. As such, when Clivia Tharn attempted to reclaim the tower, the Moth Priest offered her aid, and when the Vestige further came to support the assault, the attack on the tower took place. While the tower was reclaimed, it would become clear that Clivia Tharn had not been present and instead been replaced by a Daedric minion of Malag Ball. This had, indirectly pro had been indirectly prophesied with the Elder Scroll, which had said that the Empress Regent would show a be a shadow of herself and turn into the enemy of her own people. What was strange about this particular scroll was that no matter how often it was read, the outcome always remained the same with a blank ending, which I think is clear because the Elder Scrolls Online doesn't have a clear ending or 
I don't know if it will ever end, I don't really know. I didn't really play too much of ESO. During the late Third Era, the Cult of the Ancestor Moth would be used by the Thieves Guild within Cyrodiil. The Grey Fox desired Sevilla's stone from the catacombs of the Temple of the Ancestor Moth, which was said to be an artifact with magical powers. The Moth Priests had been able to keep the stone a secret from the Emperor, who would have used it to his own advantage, destroyed it, or kept it locked in his palace. This did not prevent the theft of the stone, however, which would be used by the Grey Fox for its ability to see past the defenses of the White Gold Tower. One of these things the stone revealed to the Grey Fox was the need for a special arrow known as the Arrow of Extradition, which was in possession of Fathis Aren, the court wizard of Braville. Only the arrowhead would be obtained, however, as uh, part of this was in the possession of Fathis Aren. While the arrowhead was being repaired, the Grey Fox used the stone once more and discovered that he needed the boots of spring -Heel Jack, no, not the one in England. In order to go through his plans, after acquiring the boots, the Grey Fox needed to spend a little bit more time with Sibylla Stone before he would be finished planning the raid. The final heist would occur and the theft of the Elder Scroll from the Imperial Lobby would lobby imperial library would take place and the gray fox had been working on this plan for essentially 11 years through the final usage of civil stone the gray fox discovered a way around the locked entrance and through this went through the sewers of the imperial city with the power of the elder scroll the gray fox was able to alter history and named the thief of the gray cowl of nocturnal as amir derloth as such the true entity of the gray uh, identity of the gray fox was revealed once more as corvus ambronax who would take up his position as count once more after awarding the gray cowl to the thief who helped him in the final heist now lastly of course we have the fourth era in the year 175 the elder scrolls disappeared from the white gold tower leaving the imperial library empty Later in 201, Harkin, of the, who is the lord of the Volcair clan, would attempt to bring the prophecy of the tyranny of the sun. Now, Lord Harkin's daughter, Serana, had been locked away with the Elder Scroll, which Lord Harkin had sought to obtain in order to bring about the prophecy. After having the prophecy given through the scroll, he was able to spread the word of an Elder Scroll having been found and caught the attention of a moth priest. Now, Dexian, Dexian Abicus would be sent to Skyrim with an Imperial Legion to escort to find a scroll. Along the way, he was ambushed by a unit of vampires who took him to Vorbear's hideout. Here, he was turned into a thrall by the vampire Malchus, who was then killed by the Dawnguard forces. After being taken from the Vorbear's hideout, Dexian would then read the Elder Scroll to essentially to his liberators providing them with the knowledge to this not to put the prophecy at an end however the not the entire prophecy could be known as the moth priest needed two other elder scrolls to add the information to find these elder scrolls the last dragonborn had to go around skyrim to retrieve them and upon retrieving the elder scroll of dragon and the elder scroll of blood the moth priest would then essentially be able to discover the rest of the prophecy but he would be permanently blinded in order to read the Elder Scrolls, Dexian had taught the Elder, had the Dragonborn the ritual revolving around the Canticle Tree and the Ancestor Moths. With this knowledge, the Dragonborn was able to read the Elder Scrolls in Ancestor's Glade, after which the Dragonborn would obtain Ariel's bow and defeat Harkon. It is unknown whether or not the Dragonborn made the prophecy of the Tyranny of the Sun come true or not, however, as this is an option within the game. Now. That is all we have today, guys. This is a lot longer of a video than uh, than what was been what's been coming out usually, and I understand that as well. And so this is why I've been putting it off to the end, essentially. Which I don't know whether or not this video will come out on the Tuesday or the Wednesday of when uh, the week is supposed to come out, because if I don't get it done on time on Tuesday, it'll be, or if I don't have enough, if it's too late when I get back home because uh, I don't know my homework schedule at the moment. I it'll, I don't want to put it out at like 2, 3 in the morning because, you know, it's hard to watch, <laughs> hard to get people to watch videos at that point. So this video might be coming out in on Wednesday, just probably around 8 o'clock in the morning or 10 o'clock in the morning Eastern Standard Time. And we'll, I would expect the video then. But 
yeah, I'm actually glad I got to come over and talk about this topic again. This is actually something I didn't know much about, if at all. And so going able, going in and learning about this was definitely incredible to do. So again, I want to thank, uh, I want to thank the person who recommended the video to me at that point because again, it's something that shed a lot of light on something I didn't know too much about. And um, I just want to go in. I'm actually going on Discord at the moment as we speak because I was going to go and thank him for the video idea because I believe that is what triggered the idea. I was like, oh man, well, yeah, it was Grandmaster Joffrey, so I want to make you give you a big shout out there for having me take out this topic because man it was definitely incredible to be able to go back and look at this um if you guys have any other suggestions please leave it in the discord chat or in the comments below it is easier for me to go back to the discord chat and read it and be able to, to see it and have it there permanently than putting it in the comments because essentially i might not be able to, i might see it the first time and forget to make a note of it or i might be busy at the time and not note of it note it so usually i try to put it in my notes section on my phone so i then have an area where i can cons consistently see it but obviously i can't i i can't i sometimes i have a pretty bad memory so it's hard to find or hard to remember sometimes but uh at that point i'll stop rambling i you know not a lot not too much has happened i know i typically do news here as well i've been debating on putting elder scrolls lore out on wednesdays now i'm not too sure if i'll do that if you guys want it i'll do it if not i'll leave it be and then uh yeah i would uh see you i will see you all around peace if you just happened to stumble upon this video and enjoyed maybe consider subscribing if you are a returning subscriber and you enjoyed please hit that like button it really helps way more than you actually think it would and i hope to see you all in the next video peace